a farmer's market. And we now have another garbage can, and this one smells like dead fish. There it is. See? And there's no other garbage can on this side. I wonder why. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. One of the questions that should be on your mind and your heart, how do I get to a place called heaven? And the answer may not be what you think the answer is. It's a simple answer that has no merit of yours. It's a salvation plan that's not made of man. <clears throat> It's not a religion to say, how do I go to heaven? And the answer, I go to church, I'm a good person, I give money, is not the answer to go to heaven. For Jesus said in John chapter 14, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. The only way into acceptance of God into His holy heaven is by the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, a Lamb of God, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. Now the heaven of the Bible is not the heaven that you think of. There are no dogs. There's no drinking. There's no sin, and there's only the worship of God and His Son, Jesus Christ. I'm sorry to tell you that in hell there's no partying. You will not enjoy the company of your friends. As the Bible says that hell is full of torments, and pain, and darkness. Your friends will be in hell, but you will not be able to see them. For the Bible says that God is light. And in hell there is no God. There is no Jesus. Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. In the absence of God and Jesus Christ, hell is a darkened state. And yet, when we read the Bible, heaven, New Jerusalem, is lighted by God and the Lamb forever. That in heaven there is no darkness, there is no fear, there is no sin. And on top of all that, the Bible says that we shall be changed, that we will get a new body. By faith and belief on the Lord Jesus Christ that's able to save your soul. The gospel is that the Bible says go in all the world and preach the gospel. The gospel is not that you give us money. The gospel is not that we eat Jesus, that we kill people, that we worship idols, that we turn to anybody but God. The gospel is that Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried. And he arose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's the gospel. In order for you to get to heaven, your Savior had to die according to the scriptures. He had to be buried. And he had to arise from the grave three days later. Now I'm sorry, if you got a good Friday Jesus... That's not the biblical Jesus. You cannot get from Friday to Sunday three days. And Paul warns us to the, the epistle to the Corinthians that there's another Jesus. There's another spirit. And there's another gospel. Some people think that Jesus is still on the cross. He's nailed to the cross. We can 
walk into your sanctuary and we can see an image, we can see an idol of Jesus still being nailed to that cross. That's not the gospel Jesus. Because the gospel Jesus was nailed to the cross, he was buried, and he did arise from that grave three days later, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father. That's the biblical Jesus that had to be born of a virgin named Mary. Now, Mary did give birth. Mary did provide a vessel for Christ to be in his human form, and that's it. She gave birth to a man that's God and God that's a man. That's it. She's not to be honored. She's not to be praised. She's not to be prayed to. Your salvation works upon Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. There is no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. Salvation from what? What was the purpose that Jesus Christ came and died that the Bible proclaims to go preach the gospel? What's it all about? What do you need to be saved from? Because the question in Acts 16 is, what must I do to be saved? From what? Because the answer is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And when we talk about being saved, we've got to talk about a place called hell. In the Bible, there is life after death. It is by heaven, by Jesus Christ. It is hell by rejecting Jesus Christ. All is not well. There is a hell. And we may enjoy a beautiful Saturday morning. And we may, Lord willing, enjoy a Saturday afternoon of possible rain. We may enjoy the fruits and vegetables that are sold here at the farmer's market. But you got to realize the wages of sin is death. Death may come knocking at your door any moment now. There have been people who have been walking and talking, and a little cell has entered their brain. And they died and went off eternity. There are people who have crossed the road, and been hit by a car, and stepped off eternity. There are people who have gone and sat down in their favorite chair in their house, closed their eyes to eternity. And there is aggravating, aggravation of death, of suffering. Death is all around us. It will happen. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. And you cannot say, well, I'm not a sinner because your death will prove that you are. And with that sin, the Bible states, the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. You've got to deal with your condition called sin. It's a terminal disease. And it comes by birth of a woman. And no doctor, no priest, no pastor, no rabbi can deal with your sin. It is something between you and God. Your mother knows that you are a sinner and she cannot do nothing about it. Your spouse knows some of your sins. And they can't do nothing about it. And yet God knows all your sins. Behold, the eyes of the Lord are every place beholding the evil and the good. Now why would the Bible say evil and then good? You think the good book would say the good and the evil. Why the negative first? And who in America wants to talk about negativity? That offends me. 
Because men are prone to do evil more than good. And the very fact that if you think that giving money to charities, going to church, doing the religious thing, being the good person that you think you are, you are making yourself more and more wicked and evil as you go on. But you say that's good, not in the eyes of God it's not good. Because the Bible says there is none good. There is none that seeketh after God. And in your best state, in the eyes of God, you are a filthy rag. And I don't want to tell you what that rag is. But it's in the Bible, in the book of Isaiah. And God is not pleased with you right now. He does not love you if you never trusted Christ as your Savior. As a matter of fact, as we are preaching Christ right now, preaching Jesus Christ the way, the truth, and the life, your rejection of God is bringing the wrath of God upon your life right now. The more I preach, the more you hear, and the more you reject, you do not bring the love of God. John the Baptist says in John 3.36, he that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son hath not life, but shall see the wrath of God abiding upon him. John chapter 3 says, You're not going to hell. You're already there. And God has told us to go all the world and preach the gospel that you may come out of that place called hell. And the only way to come out of that place called hell is by Jesus Christ. God does not take charity. Your good works is not accepted by God. Your family blood of, of how, whoever, what family you are is not accepted. For the man that sleeps under the bridge, to the man that lives in the White House, you must have the blood of Jesus Christ to be saved. It's not of a Baptist. There are no Baptists in heaven. Contrary to Baptist belief. The only way you can be a Christian is by putting your faith and your trust in the Word and in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. That's it. Don't step up and say, I got this, I do this, I... I. No, no, because that's not the truth. I don't care what your religious leader taught you. The Bible teaches you that you need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. You need the blood of the Lamb to have your sins cleansed. Do you want to go to heaven? Are you thinking about your eternal state? Because once you die, you cannot do over. You cannot come back and change your mind. God will not give you a time out in hell. Oh, let's spend this amount of time in hell and I'll let you out. No, that's not true. That's not going to happen. Once you wake up in hell, you will stay in hell until God judges you and casts you into the lake of fire. That burneth forever. If you were to die without Jesus Christ, it is damnation, it is the wrath of God that bideth upon you forever. And the simple means to get to God is by His remedy. For the Bible states, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Life comes from God's love. God's love is giving, and giving is the Lord Jesus Christ. You cannot ignore it. You cannot pass it off. You cannot wish it away. 
You are held accountable to God by hearing the gospel today. And I'm sorry to say that you are within the ear sound of my horrible, mean voice when you stand before God condemned. You cannot tell God, I never knew. Because you are hearing what God expects from your life right now. You cannot plead innocence. Because you are hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ. You heard and have heard that Jesus saves. And when you walk up to God with whatever you got that's not Jesus, you can't say, well, I never heard. I never knew. You are listening now. And I know you're listening because the people that come from your farmer's market tell us that they hear us. And the word of God, the grace of Jesus Christ is preached. That what must you do to be saved, to get out of hell, is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Now, you don't like that? You don't want to hear that? That's tough. God never asks for your opinion. You will stand before God condemned and in the wrath of God. And just because you don't believe it, just because you wish us away, is not going to make it good in your eternal life. You will stand before God, as the Bible says, prepared to meet thy God. And you are hearing the most lovable message ever that you can meet, but you're hearing upon wicked ears, sinful ears, that Satan does not want you to hear. So you're getting the negativity, oh, he's too loud, oh, he, he's, he's hate-mongering, oh, he's a nuisance. And for somebody that is saved, which we have met here, they will come up and say, Glory to God, thank you for preaching that gospel. Thank you for what you're doing. And for those that are in the wrath of God, they'll come up here and give us their two cents. And walk away saved and condemned. They will add lies to their testimony. They will, you will step up here and say, well, you drive people away. That's a lie. It didn't drive you away. Jesus would never have done what you done. He did. And he promotes it. And what you do by fighting against the Word of God, you make yourself more of a sinner. And then some of you proclaim, well, I'm a Christian. You get up here, open up your mouth and prove you're not a Christian. And you never open the pages of the Bible outside of Psalms. You're just hard and mean. Wait till God deals with you. And that we're so hard and mean that we are bringing you the grace of Jesus Christ that you may fall upon God on His mercy side. The side of the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. The side of the begotten Son. The only begotten Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. On the side that Jesus saves. And you come to that side of Jesus Christ and you will be welcomed to heaven. You will not have the wrath of God. You may lose some rewards, but we all will lose and have smoke and ashes. But you will not be cast into the lake of fire. But if you choose to reject the message, you choose to not to take heed to the gospel, and you will suffer the wrath of God. Jesus Christ came to save sinners. He is the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. And you are a sinner. And I don't need to know what your sins are. 
It's none of my business. It's between you and God. But the fact is, the wages of sin is death. You going to die shows you are a sinner. Now what do you do with your sins? Your priest can't handle the sins. He's a sinner. You can't buy sins away. How much does lying cost? What is the redemption price board for sins? It's the blood of Jesus Christ, the suffering, the death of God's Son. That's how much sin costs. That Jesus Christ left His abode in heaven, born of a virgin, lied in a manger, but there's no room at the inn. Set forth about 30 years old into his ministry. Rejected and despised of his own kindred, the Jews. The priests plot to kill him. Judas betrayed him. The disciples left him as he was mocked. Brutally punched, whipped, blindfolded. The Bible speaks of other blasphemies which are not even mentioned. Put into the fist of the Roman soldiers. Planted a crown of thorns upon his head. laid his hands out to be nailed to that cross, pierced his feet with nails. And I see you people just walking around like a bunch of dung goats. You don't even care what God has done for you. You don't even want to listen to the message about God, about His Son. And then when you stand before God, prepare to meet that God, you're going to want God to give you His time. When you're not giving God your time right now. You are hearing about the world's greatest gift. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. You are hearing the greatest news that will redeem you from the flames of hell. You are hearing about the way to get out of hell before you die. It is faith and trust and belief upon the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. Everybody thinks in their head, oh, I want to go to heaven. But there's so many kinds of heavens out there. There's the southern heaven. With your coon dog and your rifle shooting ducks. There's the bluegrass heaven. Honky tonk music. Likened to rock and roll. Where God will take great pride because I'm a Baptist. There's the Catholic heaven. Everybody will get worship but Jesus Christ. And that's not the biblical heaven. The biblical heaven rests upon God and His Son, Jesus Christ. The angels, the seraphim, the Christians, the Jews, worship one. And there is no dogs. There is no alcohol. There is no NASCAR. And for that one right
right there, probably a lot of people with these races. Yeah, I don't want to go. Yes, you do. Because the alternative to heaven is being tormented in hell. And you are tormented. All the time. Without end. For some of you that are suffering with pain beyond control, that you are thankful to your doctor for the medication that you can get in a relief. Temporal. And in hell there will be no doctor prescription. There will be no relief from medicine. There is no medicine and there is no relief. And the only way for you to be saved is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. For God commanded His love to us, and yet while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Because at our death, we can't do anything but die. That's our best performance. That brings down the curtain. And if there's any applause, we're not there to hear it. And there's no encore after death. But realize when you do die, your eyes will open to eternity. And where will you lie? In heaven by Jesus Christ or by hell? And you can do anything you want to get to hell. But a man is cast into hell by rejecting Jesus Christ. If you have never trusted Jesus as your Savior, you cannot say, I'm going to heaven. You cannot. I don't care what your church says. I don't care what that TV evangelist says. The Bible says without Jesus Christ, you will face the wrath of God. And you will face the wrath of God for all eternity. Because you have chosen to reject God's gift. For God sent His Son into this world to suffer and die, that you may have eternal life by belief. But man would believe in the Satan, man would believe in anything but what God has to say. So the question today is, do you want to go to heaven? And there's only one answer. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. You say, well, what does that have to do about going to heaven? That's the only way to heaven. You see, you can't say, yes, I want to go to heaven, and that's it. That is not it. The entrance to heaven is holy and fully upon the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. You know how the book of Revelation ends? God and the Lamb. If you do not come to the Lamb... You do not come to New Jerusalem. You do not come to heaven. And when that Passover night of the Jewish people, if they did not receive the blood of that lamb that night, when the death angel came, they died. But with the blood of lamb, God says, if I see the blood, I will pass over you. 
Salvation is by Jesus Christ alone. Salvation is a bloody redemption price. And the blood is not Christian. The blood is Christ. You see, you might be fooled into a religion that says to shed infidel's blood. But that religion are infidels themselves. Because they don't know Jesus Christ. They think Jesus Christ is a good prophet and that's it. But they are ignorant of the Bible because the Bible never says for man to shed man's blood. Before the law, during the law, and after the law, God says if you, if you shed man's blood, your blood shall be slain. So how do you build a religion upon what God says I call abomination? There's a religion out there that says if I eat the body and drink the blood of Jesus, I'll be saved. And again, the scriptures say if you eat someone's body, you're a cannibal, and that's an abomination. And the Bible says that Jesus is not going to come back for salvation. He sacrificed his life once for all. So every time you do the Mass and you bring Jesus Christ back, you are violating the Scriptures. And the Gospel is that Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. And He was buried. And He arose again the third day according to the Scriptures. You see, Jesus Christ died according to the Scriptures, and your religion has nothing to do with the Scriptures. Oh, you think it's Bible, but the Bible says, Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needs not to be shamed rightly divine the word of truth. And religions are not to be found in the Bible in a God-blessing way. I can find in the Bible sunrise service, and yet it stands in guilt before God in Jeremiah. I can find the Christmas tree in the Bible. Again, not in the way of God. I can find the biblical Jesus in the ways of salvation. Verses by verses by verses by verses. Over and over. I can find a commandment of Mary in the Bible. Whatsoever my son saith, do it. John chapter 2, I believe. And after that, Mary never really opened her mouth. Mary said, whatever my son says, do it. And Jesus said, he that believeth on me hath the Father. He that doeth the word hath the Father. Hath the house built upon the rock. In the Gospel of Luke, a woman comes up to Jesus and said, Oh, blessed are your paps that you sucked upon. Blessed is your mother. Gospel of Luke. And Jesus' kind response was, Blessed are they that do the word of God and keep it. As far as that Mary worship, get out of here, lady. It's not in the Bible. Gospel of Luke. Look it up yourself. Do a little studying yourself. You see, the, there's two problems in your life right now. 
and it don't have to be too. The number one problem that you got, you're going to die. That's a problem. When you die, your to-do list is done. The appointments that you have on your refrigerator will not be fulfilled. Whatever your goal was to do, whatever it is, maybe a great goal that you have for your life, it's finished, undone. You have died. And your family loves you so much they throw dirt on you and bury you. Sorry, but that's what happens. They bury you. If they keep you around, you're going to stink and you're going to... Uh. It gets messy. Sort of like your birth. But see, that's not the end of life. Some of you may believe that when I die, that's it. It's done. It's finished. Oh, well. But according to the Bible, God's source, God's source, not yours, God's, you will go into eternity. And there are two means of eternity, hell or heaven. There's no other. He said, well, how do I go to heaven? You are listening to the way to go to heaven. You are hearing the audio version of the Bible today. You are hearing the Bible with your ears. He that has ears, let him hear. Jesus said that often. And what you are hearing, you need to hear before you die. That Jesus died. You will die. But you didn't do it according to Scripture. Well, yeah, you kind of died according to Scriptures. The way to the sin is death. Most cases, they will bury you. There are other ways. They bury Jesus. So far, so good. But now we run into the problem. You stay in that grave. And you rot in that grave. But Jesus came out of that grave three days and three nights later. You won't. Now, why did he die? Why did he get buried? And why did he come out of that grave? To meet the Jerusalem news headlines? It's impossible because they didn't care. You see, God knows when you die, that's it. The choices you've made are eternal. And God says, I don't want you to go to heaven. The Bible says God's not willing that any should perish. So, go ye all the world, my people, and tell them about Jesus. Tell them what they need to do before they die. We don't ever, ever, ever preach in a graveyard. It's too late. Dead people don't listen. Dead people can't do nothing about nothing. But you are living. You've got ears to hear. And before your death, you have heard that you need to believe on Jesus Christ to be saved. You can't do anything after you're dead. You can't wake up a 
in hell and say, well, I don't like this place. Let me go back and redo it. Oh, God, I'm in hell. God, send me back Saturday morning to that street preacher. I'll take one look of you coming back from that grave and scream as a zombie. But you can't come back from the grave. You cannot undo what you've done before you die, and that's reject Jesus Christ as your Savior. If you are living and breathing right now, you may not be five minutes from now, five hours from now, five days, five weeks, five years. You may not be living. But before that time happens, in order to get out of hell, he that hath the Son has eternal life. He that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. And you cannot choose to reject what we are saying. God will not allow you to reject what we are saying. It is His Word. The Bible says, in, in a not quoting verbatim, that His Word will accomplish what He has for it to do. Now, if you choose to reject God and His Savior, the words that we preach unto you will damn your soul. The words that we preach unto you, if you are the word to receive Christ as your Savior by faith, will be joy and everlasting. The words of hope, the words of heaven, are being spoken right now. What we are doing and what we are preaching right now, if you check the book of Acts, were the same ways that the apostles were doing it. They preached Christ. They preached the gospel. And people got saved. And people were damned. And the Bible speaks about you all. He says in Matthew, Broad is the way that leads into destruction, and many that go therein. I know you are the many. I pray you will not be. But in reality, you are the many. Straight is the gate that, gate that leadeth into life, and few be there that will enter in. I hope someone in here is the few. But I am Bible conscious enough to know that you are the many. If one person out of this ministry of four years now, Lord willing, maybe more, if one person were to come to Christ as their Savior, if one of you Christians in there were to wake up and start to do right, it will be worth it all. But the cost of the many... You see, when you start a ministry like this, 
You don't walk into this ministry saying they're all going to come and be happy. That's against the Bible. But I stand here to preach to you because you're going to die. You need to know what God expects from your life. To believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. I'm kind of here for the results, but I know the results won't come as much as I would like to see them come. But I am guiltless. I am innocent of your decision to reject Christ. And I have told you By the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world, the only way to heaven. There is no other way. And you go about your life rejecting God. I've done my job. And the Bible says in Romans 10, My feet, my walk are beautiful to God. Yours is not. You see, I'm obeying what God has told me to do by preaching the gospel. I'm right with God, besides the fact is I'm a sinner. But you are the ones that are rejecting God. You are the ones that are disobeying His word. And you will give an account. By not having the Son, you will face wrath. And you have heard that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So when you die and wake up in hell, you did it against our wishes and our ministry, and you've done it against the hope of God through Jesus Christ. God does not love you by rejecting Jesus Christ. But He says in His long suffering, will you step out and tell them about Jesus Christ? And when you do that, they're not going to believe you. So God has said to His ministers, Go in all the world and preach the gospel, but guess what? There will be few, if not none, no response glorifying Jesus Christ. You stand here buying something that God has given us as a gift, fruit and vegetables. And yet you will not even think about God the Creator. This is the worst place to have a street ministry for unsaved people. Because you are enjoying the gift that God has given you, food. Delicious food. I see tons and tons of tomatoes. And I thank God for each and every one of them that I get. You are standing here with the blessings of God's produce. And the blessings of hearing about God's Son to get you to heaven. And most of you are not even thankful either or.